let's be honest, fifth round picks, sixth round picks, late fourth, seventh. I, I don't know how good those guys are. The only fourth round pick I know will be really good is Isaiah Spiller, uh, who I watched in the SEC at Texas A&M for two years. The Chargers got him. He's going to play a lot. He could. He will play a lot. Outside of that, you cross you cross your fingers on fourth round picks. What I do is take when the season ends until this morning, the Monday after the draft. I take your free agent moves, your coaching moves, and your top two or three draft picks. That's how I measure your offseason. And I thought one team from the day the Super Bowl was over until this morning, this morning, the Denver Broncos crushed it. Forget the fact that they went from Drew Locke to Russell Wilson at quarterback. How about the fact that they added Randy Gregory and DJ Jones on the defensive line? And Kawan Williams, defensive end. Or got Billy Turner, a tackle from the Packers. Then they went in the draft and got Nick Benito, excellent speed guy. So now they've got Randy Gregory, DJ Jones, Kawan Williams, and Nick Benito. They have totally rebuilt their defensive line to put pressure on quarterbacks. And then their third-round pick, Greg Dulcich, is a tight end from UCLA who replaces Noah Fant, who they traded to Seattle. He is a, like Fant, a vertical wide receiver. He was a walk-on at UCLA. He was a wonderful player. So ask yourself, that to me is the best upgrade of any team. Super Bowl whistle ends this morning, Denver Broncos. So think about the last two Super Bowl winners, Tampa and the Rams. What were the five things they had? Number one, an offensive coach. Number two, a star quarterback. Number three, a really intense pass rush. Denver just added that. Number four, weapons. And number five, one top corner. Denver now has all of those. I like Kansas City. They don't have a top corner. I like Buffalo. That franchise has a defense, a head coach, and they kind of lean defense. I like San Francisco. What's their quarterback situation? The Broncos have it all. Offensive coach, star quarterback, big-time pass rush, nice weapons, and one, one high-end corner. And if, if Nathaniel Hackett can coach, that's the only question, they're off and running. Um, in fact, what's ironic is the only weakness for Denver that I look at and I think, oh, they're not great there, is linebacker. And that was the Rams' weakness last year and the Bengals' weakness. So there's just places you need to spend your money. They always say this when you buy a house or you're redoing your house. Spend money in the kitchen and your master bath. That's where you spend your money. In the NFL, there's places to spend your money. Quarterback, weapons, pass rush, and one big-time corner. And Denver has them all. There are a lot of teams out there. I thought Seattle had a great weekend for the draft, but they spend their money on safeties. That's not where you spend your money. Um, Chicago's got some really good pieces, but they don't spend enough money at wide receiver or offensive line. They spend it too much at safety and too much at linebacker. So there are places to absolutely spend your money. Now, people will say, oh, Denver, oh, boy, their division. Stop. There's a reason the SEC champ usually wins the national championship and they have the hardest schedule. It hardens you. Tampa Bay won a Super Bowl in a division where the Saints had 12 wins. The Rams just won a Super Bowl in a division with Kyle Shanahan, Russell Wilson, Arizona. It doesn't hurt you. It helps you. So I, I thought over the course of a weekend, there was, there's, there was one team coupled with free agency. I mean, to go from an old coach in Vic Fangio, old defensive coach, to a young offensive coach in Nathaniel Hackett, that in itself should change things. Then you go Drew Locke to Russell Wilson. Then you totally upgrade your defensive line. They already had the weapons. Then you replace Noah Fant. You already drafted Patrick Sertan, the great corner out of Alabama last year. Denver should be a Super Bowl favorite or a near favorite for the next several years. That is how you build a franchise in one year. And to Joy's point, that's why the NFL is so damn popular. You can literally rebuild your franchise in a year. Rams had Jeff Fisher, Jared Goff. A year later, they won 11 games. No other sport lets you do that. Baseball, it's a money sport. NBA, it's, it's hard to get out of contracts. You make one mistake like the Lakers with Westbrook, you are trapped for years. So good for them. Um, Really good playoff stuff. Uh, I'm going to talk about both games. Let me start with the Warriors over Memphis. So Draymond Green got ejected. That felt, as Draymond Green said, a little bit of a reputation ejection. Um, I I always laugh when fans say the NBA is rigged. The officiating was not great yesterday, and it really favored Memphis. 
there's no way you would be rigging this series for Memphis, which has no history of driving TV ratings. You would not be rigging the playoffs against Steph Curry, who I think there's something to indicate. He's the number one draw in the league right now from a TV perspective. I think it's not LeBron anymore. I think it's Steph. There's a little LeBron fatigue. But loud home crowds right on the referees, college and pro, I think can sway officials on four or five calls. I thought Memphis got every call and still lost. In fact, I thought four or five things happened yesterday. They all went in Memphis's favor, and they still lost. So to me, game one was a series. So Clay Thompson missed clanked too late free throws. Doesn't happen much. Draymond got ejected. He's your best defensive player, the heart and soul of the team after Steph Curry. Uh, Steph Curry missed four or five uh, open threes down the stretch. Uh, the, the officiating went in Memphis's direction. And also, Jaron Jackson had 33 point and six threes for Memphis. I'm going to go with that's not going to happen again in the series. And John Morant's amazing, but he hit four threes. That's as many as he hit in the entire Minnesota series. So Memphis was getting all sorts of threes they don't normally get. They got officiating breaks. Draymond got ejected. Steph and Clay did things they never do. And Memphis, with a minute left, had the lead and blew it. So that felt like the series. The other thing you saw with that series and this is where it, it, it's, it's the difference between guys that have been in this league forever and kids. Golden State is so patient and so smart. I mean, is there ever been a team that finds the open three-point shooter more than Golden State? I mean, that ball movement is so clever. I mean, they, it, the only remarkable thing was they kept missing the threes, but God, do they move the ball? It is art. Um, and so I thought that was a tough loss for Memphis. But that's the one you got to steal. Now Golden State, I, I just don't see Memphis duplicating that three-point barrage, and I don't see Draymond getting ejected in multiple games down the stretch. I didn't feel it was a flagrant two which gets you ejected, but uh, you know a lot of people felt it was a go-either-way uh, call. I think in the Bay Area, they don't eject him. In Memphis, they eject him. The sport's not rigged, but home crowds, the fans are on top. They sway it. It's emotional, uh, and it was a fantastic game. The NBA playoffs have been absolutely wonderful. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.